All right, we're going to do a little bluegrass today. This is going to be Blackberry Blossom, the bluegrass classic. So let's get started. Our first chords. As a basic strum, you could kind of go down, down, up. G to D, C to G, C to G again, and then A to D, A major. Back to G to D, C to G, C to G again, and then D to G the last time. So that's our first progression. So if you sped it up a little bit, it would be... So that's the first part, that's the A part of that song. So let's slow that down a little bit and try to play along. Two, three, four. G, D, C, G. C to G again. And A to D. G to D. C to G. C to G again. D to G. Now let's look at the next part. The next part is going to go longer on each chord, so we can do that alternating bass thing to make it a little more exciting. So we got an E minor there, two and two. On that. But what I'm doing is I'm going big E string bass to the chord a little bit to the fifth string, which is the fifth of that E, the B note. So that was three times of the with the alternating bass thing on that E minor. And then B7, 21202. Oh, and I'm gonna go to the lower fifth on that bass note. Now another thing I like to do is I like to do a little uh, bass note kind of walking thing into that B7. So let's look at that E minor again. second fret on the big string for that alternate bass note. So. Now we're going to go C to the G and D to the G. Now we can walk into that C too. So all together, kind of up to speed, would be like... Okay, so I'm going to get a loop going of those chords and show you how to play the lead now. Okay, so that's getting us going there. Now, there's one thing before there's a lead-in thing you can go. So think of a one, two, a three. That's going to be G string open, and then open two, four in the D string. And then we're going to start our main melody. So our first melody part is going to be O, four, two, open. Then we have four in the D string to open two, open on the G. So... O four two O and then four in the D four O two O. So let's look at the intro lead in riff. Now our next thing is gonna be okay. 
so let's look at those first pieces again. We got open and the G, O, two, four. That's our little lead in. O, four, two, O, four, and the D then next. Four, O, two, O, two, four, O, two, O. And then we're gonna go. That's open in two on the A down to the D string, so. To the C. So that was two, oh, two, oh, three, two. So we got. And then we're gonna go. So, oh, four, two, and then two down here. All together. Okay, then we're back to the beginning. With a different ending this time. So that was C note here. Last part, O four O two four O two four O. So one more time. Okay, now with bluegrass picking, a lot of people will have their fingers really tucked in to get the most efficient way of playing, just skipping strings and stuff like that. I don't really do that a whole lot myself. Um, everybody has different styles. One of the things I do do for bluegrass is use one of these tricky little picks right here. It has even, evenly sized ends, so it's almost like you got three picks in one. And it's got the holes in the middle. It's pretty thick, so it's easy to kind of grasp. And you, if you have a longer type guitar pick, that might be easier for electric guitar. It can be hard for some of this faster bluegrass stuff because you need to kind of stay in close to the strings. And that's why people kind of put those fingers in too. So there's not a lot of movement going on. I still kind of use my fingers in a more electric type fashion, kind of holding as a brace here and there and stuff. But you do want your hand to be free and you're definitely looking at your down and up picking. If you notice what I'm doing down here, It's like strictly down, up, down, up, down, up, no matter what strings I'm going on. There can be an exception here and there, but that's really your basic rule. You're really trying to hammer that home. So let's go ahead and look at the next part. So this is the higher octave of that same A part progression. Let's take a look at that. So let's break that down. We got the eighth fret of the second string with the middle finger. So let's look at that. We got eight and then seven. And then that's ten, eight, seven. And then ten, eight, seven again to the nine here. To the eight, seven, nine, seven. To the open B string, second string. So then we're gonna go. So that was two four on the D string, and then open G string, and then two O on the D string. So and then we're gonna go on the G string. O two four two O four two. And then we're going to take that third fret of the second string and slide it just right back into the place where we started that riff again. So. Now the only difference is the end here. O two four, O two four on the D, back to the G. 
So let's get that loop going. Here we go. Alright, so that's part A. Okay, so that's our part B chords right there. Okay, here goes part B. Okay, so let's break down that second part. This is when we go to the E minor chord. So we're going to have, so that's our first riff we got. We're going to start a little ahead of that new measure, that new part, and we're going to go five, six, seven. So five, six is a little walk in. So we're going to go down to the fifth fret of the second string here after this walk up. And you put your seventh fret pinky in there on the third string. And the reason for that is just, it's kind of like an E7 shape. We don't have to use the 6 in there, though, but it keeps your fingers where they need to be for that riff. So 5, 6, 7, 5, 7, 5, back to the 7 bass note. So that was 5, 7, 4, 7, 5, 6, 7. So it starts the same way the second time. Three, five, seven, three, five, three, five on the second string. Now we're gonna go back to this riff. For those first four notes, then we're gonna slide up into a new, to a new thing. So that was seven to nine on the D, seven on the G, back to that nine. Hammer on seven to nine on the G, eight to ten. You can pick these or hammer them however like however you like. You start doing it faster in some of these things. You got to pull off and hammer on to get it at the right speed and stuff. So now this last riff. So that's seven eight seven ten eight ten seven to the ten on the D string. 8 to 9 on the D string, and then we got three more notes down here. That's G string open, to the D string 2, to the G string open. And then we're back to the other riff. Sometimes I'll give it a little, to give it a little extra thing. 3, 5, 7, 3, kind of a hammer on, pull off, pull off. Now later in the song we have another B part coming up. We're going to do that one like this. So there's a little lead in, two notes there before, kind of like this. Da -da -dum, uh, four and one, or E, uh, four E and a one. So we got, I'm going to do a hammer on from open to two on the D string, and then the open big string, so. And that was two, two, open, two. was D, B, A, G, so. And that was two on the D to open G. 
that's two to four in the G, and then the two little strings open, so. So once again on that B part. Now, when you get to the end of the song, you do a cool little riff. Patrick Seitz from Whitewater Ramble taught me this riff. That's the bluegrass band that I got all of my blue bluegrass experience with, really. So here's a cool little riff for an ending of the song. So that's the higher octave of that riff. seven on the E string down to that G down there. And I want to thank Patrick Seitz from Whitewater Ramble for that riff right there and for teaching me a lot of bluegrass stuff over the time I was in that band. Okay, so that is Blackberry Blossom. Hope you enjoy that. Let me know if you got any requests. Let me know if you got any comments, questions, etc. And of course, we didn't go into the improvising. It is difficult to improvise in that song because those chords are moving so fast. So Maybe in a future lesson, I'll kind of talk about how to do that. And we'll catch you next time. Please like and subscribe. I'm Damon Wood. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.